sometimes stories just come out so good and so perfect the first time, and then sometimes... You write a 9,000 word story, and then you cut thousands of words out of it until it's 6,000 words, and you shop it around for a while, and nobody wants it, and you get it critiqued, and then you cut it down to 4,000 words, and then you shop it around for a while again, and then you cut it down to even less than that. And then you decide to publish it yourself, because you love it. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Emily and today we are doing a special video. We are going to talk about my short story collection, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm going to talk about myself for 10 or 20 minutes. I have been mentioning this collection off and on on my channel for a long time now and I think it's time to actually tell y'all what I'm talking about and go a little in depth. This collection I'm talking about is a collection of my own personal short stories and poems. This is the first book I'm ever going to publish. I'm going to publish it myself, which is super exciting and all the imposter syndrome you could ever imagine. <laughs> Currently I am at the stage where I have copy edited the manuscript or rather I have had an editor copy edit it and I have gone through my editor's corrections. I'm doing the final proofread on my computer. After I do that, my mom will read it because she's my final proofreader ever. And I will get a print proof from Amazon so that I can actually see it in book form and give it a read through. I will be printing the physical copies through IngramSpark, but IngramSpark has a setup fee each time you want to like upload a new file of your book. So I want to get a free copy from Amazon in order to proofread and then once I'm sure there aren't any mistakes I will be setting it up on IngramSpark. The collection is titled All the Woods She Watches Over. It has 12 stories uh, I have written over the course of the past five years or so and there's also going to be 11 different poems intermixed with the stories. I'm not going to talk about the poetry today because a lot of them are very short and I feel like if you talk about poetry, especially really short poetry, it kind of gives away the magic of it. But I thought it would be fun to talk about the short stories that I am going to include in the collection, some of which are previously published, um, many of which, more than half of which I think are originals that have never seen the light of day to anyone except my mom. <laughs> also if you can hear birds, there's a finch that's sitting right outside my open window and singing at me, so I don't know. Ambiance? Aesthetic? Maybe? The first story in the collection is called Our Wired Hearts. It is a flash fiction piece. It's one of my favorite flash fiction pieces. I don't write a lot of science fiction, but this is one of the science fiction stories I've written that I adore. It's also an original, never been published anywhere else. This story was written a couple years ago from a prompt in my writer's group. It was written over the course of a day. Again, with really short stuff, I don't want to give too much away, and this is a flash fiction. But at its basic level, this story is about two robots and war and humanity, and it's not as all depressing as that sum up sounded. <laughs> I personally think it's super cute. The second story in the collection is called Breath, Weeping Wind, Death. This one is depressing, I'm going to admit. It's depressing, but also adorable and hopeful. It's about this little girl who comes up to the roof of her apartment building and finds this mysterious character sitting out on the roof who's not very happy with himself at the moment, and they have a little conversation. And if you're paying attention to the title, you might get a sense of who the character on the roof is. I shopped it around at magazines for a long time. A lot of people told me they really liked it. A lot of editors said they really liked it, but they just didn't want to take it, which is the most frustrating version of a rejection letter ever. It eventually did get picked up at Galaxy's Edge magazine in 2019 it was published. This is actually the copy of the magazine. It's always great to get a physical copy of your story, and this sits on my desk right over there. The third story in the collection is called Robot Dreams. This one might sound familiar to you if you watched my editing a science fiction story with me. This is the second science fiction story I have in this collection, and it has been through massive rewrites. I am telling you, sometimes stories just come out so good and so perfect the first time, and then sometimes... You write a 9,000 word story, and then you cut thousands of words out of it until it's 6,000 words, and you shop it around for a while, and nobody wants it, and you get it critiqued, and then you cut it down to 4,000 words, and then you 
to shop it around for a while again, and then you cut it down to even less than that. And then you decided to publish it yourself because you love it. <laughs> But this is one of those stories that needed so many revisions, but my beta readers and also my copy editor ended up really loving this one. It's about a lonely little robot named Thomas who gets sort of adopted into this family and becomes part of them and ends up being this caretaker and sort of best friend to the two kids in the family. It is one of my favorite stories, even if no editor has picked it up. And that just goes to show you that just because an editor says the tastes aren't for them, that doesn't mean the story isn't good. Remember that. The fourth story is We Are Not Fairy Tales. This is another one of my favorite stories. I picked my favorites to put in my collection, obviously. This was another type of story that I loved it, and even the editors I sent it to said, this is really great. This is amazing. I don't want it. <laughs> I had so much fun writing this story. It's in a... it's not really second person point of view, it's what a friend of mine calls second and a half person point of view. There's the main character in first person saying, I do this and I do that, but the secondary character is referred to as you, so I do this and you do that. It's wacky. I love it. It is a strange little dystopian fairy tale about evil little fairies and the end of the world. And it's not as goofy as it sounds. <laughs> the next story is The Stars in the Rain. It is a short flash fiction piece that was published in 2017 at Flash Fiction Online. This was another one of those stories that sort of just came together. I wrote it for a prompt from my writers group. It's about two siblings who send each other pictures across the galaxy even as they're living on opposite ends of the galaxy. It's just a short little sappy family piece. My stuff is all either sad or sappy or both and case in point. The next story is Of Water and Wood. This is also not quite a flash fiction piece, it's a little bit longer, and this one was also published in Galaxy's Edge, but this one was published in 2017. I wrote this story with a very particular atmosphere in mind. This is a story about a woman who lives on the edge of the woods. She is going through a really hard time in her life, and the forest sort of starts acting really weird and ends up sending her sort of a present. Not gonna give too much away. The next story is Frozen Meadow Shining Sun. This is a Japanese fairy tale with a fox spirit in it, which of course makes it one of my favorite all-time stories. It was originally published in Beneath Ceaseless Skies back in 2018. It was also reprinted in this pretty little book right here. I did an unboxing video of that. You may remember me screaming. This was another story that I struggled with and struggled with and it went through so many rounds of revisions. I originally wrote it as a prompt from a Japanese anthology with a small publisher. It's actually currently longer than it was back when I wrote it. The anthology I originally sent it to said it's pretty good, but we already have a fox spirit story or something along those lines, so we're not going to take this. I shopped this one around for a while, and I ended up doing a major rehaul on it maybe a year or a year and a half after I originally wrote it. I looked back on it and thought the writing was clunky, and the storyline and the arcs of the characters didn't really add up to what I wanted them to be, so I did a major rewrite, I added a lot of words, took out a lot of words, and sent it around again. Scott, the editor at Beneath Ceaseless Skies, said he loved it but just wasn't happy with the ending. With his help, I went through a major round of rewrites with that story and then a major round of copy edits. That's essentially why I don't buy into that writing advice I've heard that says never edit a story unless an editor wants you to, because I firmly believe that if I hadn't overhauled this story on my own, at the midpoint of its submission round lifetime. I don't think Scott at BCS would have ever picked it up because it was so much better after I rehauled it on my own. So if you have a gut feeling that a story needs editing, absolutely edit it. <laughs> this is probably my most prestigious story because BCS is a Hugo Award winning, Nebula Award winning magazine, but it is one of the hardest magazines to get into out of the science fiction and fantasy genres. And I will tell you, I freaked out. This was one of those publishing moments that you hear about that's just way too happy to be real. The next story is Cookies for Ghost. This is a goofy little humorous supernatural story that was published at Daily Science Fiction last year. I believe this one was written off a prompt as well, though I don't remember what the prompt was. This story was very well received on Twitter. It's about a little girl who goes to confront the ghost in her attic and it doesn't go quite like you expect. And this story 
was so well received on Twitter, which is weird because I don't take part in Twitter very much because it scares me, but I woke up the day of it being published to a bunch of people sending me messages about how cute they think it was and how I should write a middle grade novel based off of it. Which I might. This is one of those stories that's just the little ray of goofy sunshine in my collection that's just full of drama and serious stories. There's just the ghost story that's cute and funny. <laughs> the next story is called Get Down. It's a short and sort of sad but also hopeful dystopian story. I did not write this one from a prompt, it just popped into my head. I actually had an acceptance on this story from a magazine whose name completely escapes me right now. And I like to joke that I made the magazine shut down because after they accepted that story, they also accepted a piece of artwork for cover art from me. And then a couple months later, the magazine went under before they could publish either my art or my story. And yeah, that hurts. <laughs> The next story is The Petals on Her Lips. This is a fairy tale about a witch and the flowers that kind of respond to her magic and her other magic that's very strange and odd throughout her entire lifetime from childhood to death. It's a short, kind of sweet and poignant story in my personal opinion. This is one that no editor touched. No editor ever even gave me a personal rejection on. And then my beta readers told me how much they love it. One of my beta readers said it was the best story out of the collection by far. He loved it so much it made him cry a little bit. I was stunned, but I always loved it and I always had faith in it, so I wanted to include it in that collection. And based off reader feedback so far, I am very happy I did. It's such a sweet story. <laughs> the second to last story is Paper Found in Garden, Secured with Locket Unbroken. I know that's a weird title. Go with me on it. This is another fairy tale about a witch writing a letter to her husband. It's another little atmospheric fairy tale about warriors and witches and love. And it's just one of my favorite things ever. But it's super funny to me how this story came to being. There was a prompt in my writer's group to write some sort of list type story. And the very first draft of this, my entire writing group, they said, Look, I love this. It's awesome. I have no idea what's happening in the story. <laughs> and I understand that. The first draft of this was the most confusing thing ever and it was just so funny to me how my entire writing group loved it but didn't understand what in the world I was trying to do. I don't even know if I understood what I was trying to do. I know there was a writer that said the art of editing is making it look like you know what you were doing or something along those lines and that has never been more true. This story was never published anywhere. I sent it out one or two places but by the time I had revised this story I was working on this collection and I absolutely knew I wanted it to be a part of the collection so I didn't really send it out on the dozens upon dozens of submission rounds. I love it and it fits the aesthetic of this collection so well. The final story in the collection is All the Woods She Watches Over. This one is also known as Rochkappen. It is a Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale published at Shimmer originally. I have revised it a bit and renamed it so it isn't impossible to pronounce. Rochkappen is a German word for Little Red Riding Hood that I'm sure I am butchering terribly. If there are German speakers in my audience, I am so sorry. This is the perfect example of a story that just came together so well. I've sort of told this story a little bit on the channel, but to go a little bit more in depth, my favorite magazine was Shimmer Magazine. They were the first magazine that really introduced me to the speculative fiction market. They were the first magazine that I ever submitted to. I submitted the first three short stories I ever wrote to them exclusively. I was so determined to get in that magazine. They had a beautiful aesthetic and beautiful atmosphere and by that third story I knew I was not a good enough writer to actually make it into their magazine. So I wrote more and I wrote more and I submitted lots of stuff, got published, still submitted some stuff to them when I thought I might have something that fit. Got a lot of really nice rejections from Elise, the main editor at Shimmer. And then back in summer of 2018, they announced that they were going to be closing. They were going to have a final submission period over late summer for the very final issue of the magazine. And I knew 
I had to try one more time to get a story into their pages. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. I took so long trying to figure out the plot of this story that they closed on a Sunday and Saturday evening I sat down to write this story and I was sure I was never going to finish. I was sure it was going to be like a 3,000 word story. Spoiler, it's about almost 6,000 words. I wrote about 600 words that Saturday evening, got up Sunday morning, didn't know where I was going to go with the plot, and it all just sort of unraveled into something that is my best story I've ever written. I don't know how it happened. I have never had that happen. I have never had that happen since then. It is quite possibly the weirdest thing that's ever happened. I don't know if it was just me absorbing their other really fantastic stories for a long time that just allowed me to write in the same aesthetic that they wanted and to somehow come up with a plot off the top of my head as the day went along that was actually good and made sense and had subtlety and layers to it. I'm not bragging, I'm just weirded out. <laughs> About two weeks later I got the bump notice from Elise which is essentially the we really like this, we're holding it for final consideration above most of other stories. I freaked out. This is one of my favorite acceptance stories ever because my parents and I went camping. It was late summer, we went to this really remote campground where there is no internet access whatsoever. And this was right after I got the final consideration notice. So I was going to know in a couple of days, but there was no internet. And we spent like two or three days in this campsite where there was no internet. and. My dad was having a fun time laughing at me because I was losing my mind. This was my dream market. They were finally closing, but I had gotten a final consideration email and I freaked out for about three days. And as we were driving out of the campground and I'm sitting on my phone trying to get an internet signal and I get the email from Elise who is the sweetest and most amazing editor ever, by the way. I'm not just saying that because she accepted my story. <laughs> she was amazing even when she was rejecting my stories. But I got the email from Elise saying, hey, we loved it, we want to buy it, we want it to be in the final issue of Shimmer Magazine. Yeah, if you thought I screamed uh, just at the final consideration notice, you have no idea. My parents were in the front seats laughing. <laughs> this was the story I made this artwork for. You may have seen the speed painting on my channel. Like I mentioned, it's a Little Red Riding Hood retelling about a woman named Adeline who is now a grandmother. She's the little girl from the Little Red Riding Hood story, but she's now the grandmother. And she's more than just like the Little Red Riding Hood victim. She is actually sort of part of the woods and knows this wolf that's part of the woods who has never come to her house before but now he's come to her house to talk. That is the final story in the collection. It's my favorite story ever. It's absolutely why I had to include it and title the collection after it. And it's one of the stories I'm most excited for all of you to read when I do finally publish this thing. So that is all about my short story collection, All the Woods She Watches Over. Very, very soon, as in by the end of this month, there will be a cover reveal and the pre-sales are going to go up for this short story collection. Woo, things are happening now. I am just so excited. This is my very first self-publishing journey and I am just so excited to be able to document it on my YouTube channel and share it with all of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the collection or anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I upload videos on Mondays or Fridays, sometimes both days. Like I mentioned, there's some exciting news coming later this month, and I will see all of you guys next week. Bye!